So in today's video, we are going to be painting our moody little bunny, Frank, who loves coffee, but is also very irritable and sleepy when he doesn't have it. So he is actually going to be teaching us today how to approach watercolor and use the three crucial skills that we learned in the previous video. I'll make sure to link that down below as well as in the corner if you have not watched that. But he is going to be teaching us how to use those three crucial skills in order to paint him today and basically bring him to life on our page. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. The very first thing that we are going to be doing is mixing up a milky consistency of our grayish purple. So this is our crucial skill number one, where we are learning to mix our colors. And the very first thing that you are going to do is mix up a deep gray. I'm gonna be using ink, um, but you are more than welcome to use dark watercolor, but I'm going to be using PH Martin's black matte ink and then slowly tinting that color with just a nice Windsor violet. Once I have that color mixed up, I am then going to paint Frank's entire body, starting from his ears all the way down to his toes. And once again, remember this crucial skill is skill number two, where we are moving our bead from one direction to the next. Once you have Frank's body completely painted, make sure to go ahead and paint the little puffs of smoke or steam coming from his coffee cup, as well as his back ear. Make sure his body is thoroughly dry before you then place another gray, slight tinted layer onto his little fluffy tail. And that is step number one, complete. The next step that we need to do is mix up a milky consistency of purple. And I'm gonna be using Windsor Violet as well as some French Ultramarine and kind of tint that into a nice rich purple color. And then I recommend painting Frank's entire sleeping cap this purple. And now we're going to be doing crucial skill number three, our mixing or blending of our colors. And this is going to be that dab effect with our brush. So what you're going to do is take a nice blue. I'm going to be using ultra blue from PH Martin's radiant line, but you can use a French ultramarine. You can use any really type of blue that you want. You're going to mix that up into more of an inky consistency on your palette and then dab that into the shadow sections of Frank's little hat. Once you're done with that, make sure that his hat thoroughly dries before moving on to the next step. So for step number three, we're going to be mixing up a milky consistency of yellow ochre. And with this color, you're going to paint Frank's entire coffee cup, except for the far right edge. This is where our highlights are gonna be. You're basically going to paint his entire coffee cup this color. And then with your brush, you're gonna take a little bit of burnt umber and dab your brush onto the edge of his cup, basically where the shadows would be. And once again, do the lazy man's way of blending your colors. After you're done with this, make sure to let it dry thoroughly. And you're gonna notice this is a constant step that I am doing. As you paint a layer, you wanna make sure that is thoroughly dry. By doing this, you're actually gonna create nice edges, basically these blocks of color in your illustration. I would say one of the top mistakes that a lot of beginners make is not allowing their colors to dry thoroughly. And what ends up happening is you get kind of these back runs or basically color 
merging into an already previously painted section where you don't want that color. And so basically a really easy way to fix that mistake and prevent it altogether is just to make sure that each section is dry before you move on to the next. So moving on to step number four, this time we're going to be mixing up a milky consistency of deep purple. And once again, I'm going to be using Windsor Violet, but use whatever purple color or even a different color, whatever you really want to. And this time we're going to be painting Frank's back edge of his sleeping cap, basically where the shadow would be located. And once you hit that nice little shimmer moment, Make sure to dab your brush with some French ultramarine blue or some type of blue into the small triangle that we have painted. And basically those colors are going to mingle together and create a nice shadow effect under his sleeping cap. The next thing that I recommend doing is kind of mixing up a more watery consistency of this same color and then maybe add a little bit of blue or tint it just a tad and then painting Frank's little fluff ball on the edge of his sleeping cap. Then with a watered down yellow ochre, we're going to paint the top and bottom of his coffee cup. And it's basically going to look like a nice cream color. While you let these sections dry, I would go ahead and pick up some watery purple gray that we mixed previously, basically on our first step when we were painting Frank's body. You're gonna take that same color and you're gonna paint two of the little puffs of steam, basically to create a little bit of depth. And once again, you probably know the drill, go ahead and let all of those areas dry thoroughly before moving on to the next step. So for this step, what we're gonna do is mix up once again, a nice yellow ochre on our palette. And then you're going to paint basically the middle section of Frank's coffee cup. And you're going to paint the entire section this time. So also paint the little white area that we left earlier. And what's going to end up happening is since we are glazing or layering on top of that previously painted color, you're going to notice the areas that were white are going to have this nice kind of airy tint to it. Whereas the areas that we already painted are going to get a little tiny bit darker. And that is a very easy way to create a depth of shadow on an object, especially on Frank's little coffee cup that he is holding onto dearly. And it's probably hard to believe, but we are nearly done with Frank's entire illustration now. So the final step is adding those final details. So for me, the final details that I added to Frank were basically some shading to his backside, his little butt, as well as his back and a little bit of the back of his head. And what I did is I just took some of my gray that was already mixed up on my palette and just added that on top and then slowly kind of pushed it outward just to create a nice shadow effect. And then what I did is I just slowly painted his backside and then watered it down to create a softening edge to his backside. And then the next thing that I did is I took a little bit of shell pink, but you can take any pink color in your watercolor palette, dilute it down until it's a nice pastel color, and then paint the inside of Frank's ears. Then after you're done with that, I would recommend really using your own creativity and painting some sort of design on Frank's sleeping cap. I always like to give y'all a little bit of opportunity to use your own creative juices in these illustrations. So for me, I decided to do stripes on Frank's cap. You can do stripes or you can do any other pattern that you desire on his little cap and what I did is I basically took a nice deep purple and I just glazed right on top or painted a 
very light layer of a stripe right over his cap. And finally, what I did, and most of y'all who follow me know, I love to use Copic white ink. Now you can use any type of white paint that you like, um, or even any type of white ink that you might have on hand. I personally like Copic, but use whatever you have on hand. And what I did is I added little dots to his tail as well as inside his ears. And then I added, basically I corrected some of my highlights that were on his coffee cup. So I painted little lines of white basically on the right edge of his coffee cup or on top of his coffee cup to keep those highlights in my illustration. And after that, I did some cross hatching with pencil work as well as some ink pens. I used my Sakura, I believe it is, um, Micron 005 ink pen for his nose as well as his eyes. And basically I shirred up my illustration. As you paint with watercolors, sometimes your pencil lines will lighten up or even kind of dissipate a little bit. So what I like to do at the very end is sure up any of those lines with pencils or ink, basically wherever I feel like it needs a little bit of oomph to my illustration to make it pop a bit more off the paper. And believe it or not, that's it. You're done. You've used your three crucial watercolor skills for this entire painting. And hopefully you enjoyed this. I really like painting bunnies. It's one of my favorite things to paint. And I always like to give them little personalities. Um, bunnies are one of my favorite things to draw and to paint. So little Frank helped teach us some things today about watercolor. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification. My schedule is going to be a little bit wonky as some of you probably know. It kind of just depends on editing. Um, so please make sure to hit that bell notification as well as follow me on Instagram. I am constantly posting on Instagram and keeping y'all updated on what's going on behind the scenes as well as when videos are coming out. So if YouTube algorithm doesn't hit you with those notifications, you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm constantly updating y'all. So lots of love y'all. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Happy painting. Bye.